What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how I built this. Now, I originally had an idea to do something like this for a little while, but I wasn't too sure how to go about doing it. Uh, that is until I came across uh, this post on a 3D printing website. Now, I'll put this down in the description if you want to go and check it out yourself, but this guy went and 3D modeled the whole Hogwarts castle and put up the download for free. Now, originally when I started this project, I didn't have a 3D printer, so uh, the first thing I did was I went and I contacted a few different companies that specialize in 3D printing. Uh, I sent them the file and I said, you know, hey, how much would this cost? Um, unfortunately, all of them turned me down and they said it was too small of a print and that I should try uh, asking like a hobbyist to see if they would print it for me. So I went online and asked a few people that had ads up for 3D printing to see, you know, hey, how much would this cost? But again, all of them turned me down and they said it was too large and they weren't willing to do it. Since nobody would give me a price uh, to even do this, I decided I'll just buy a 3D printer and try and do it myself. Now, I went on Amazon and came across this Neptune 2 3D printer by Elegoo. Uh, the printer was relatively easy to put together and after a bit of tweaking and testing, I was able to get my prints to come out without any issues. Now for the entire project I used plain white filament as I wanted something that could still shine light through while uh, being able to paint easily. So while all the parts were printing, I got started on building a coffee table that would eventually house the finished model. I cut up some 1x2s that would make up the frame of the table. And then using my drill I added 3 inch screws all around to hold everything together. Once the basic box was all assembled, I added in the base that I cut out of some little scrap plywood I had lying around. The longest part of the entire project was waiting for the 3D models to finish printing, as I wanted to print them in the finest detail I was able to. Once the landscape portion of the model was completed, I began to glue everything together. While everything was gluing, I went back into the garage and began to sand the entire table down to make sure I had a nice smooth finish. At this stage, I decided to go and paint the inside of the table black just because I thought it would look good. Once dry, I went back and I sanded over any overspray around the edges. I then used this provincial stain to add a nice look to the entire exterior of the table. Now, I am by no means a carpenter, but for what I wanted to do with this project, I'm really proud of the way that it turned out. Coming back to the model, I used some white wood filler to fill in all the gaps and cracks between the landscape pieces that were printed. I also drew up this cool stencil that I carved into the front of the table and then went back over with a soldering iron to burn it into the wood. Now 
At this point, I wasn't going to do anything more with the table, so I added some silicone all around the edges and put my glass panels into place. Using a mixture of foam, some newspaper, and plaster wrap, I started forming the landscape around the 3D model. Again, I used the wood filler to cover up all the tiny gaps that were in the plaster wrap and then added liquid rubber all along the lake bed for the epoxy I would pour later. Once dry, I went and I coated everything in a layer of grey primer. Now I wanted to add some texture to the lake bed, so I used some black sand and some spray adhesive, which I was able to use to cover the base of the lake bed nicely. Using an airbrush, I painted all of the cliffs and rocks with a light grey and the black sand in a yellowy beige. Over all the grassy areas, I coated everything in a layer of brown paint and then came back over with the airbrush for a light green. A mixture of some water and black paint were used to help give the rock faces a more natural and worn look to them. Once everything had been painted, I then used three different types of powdered turf that I sprinkled all over the grassy areas and then glued down for a more realistic grass look. I then took some gravel and added pieces all around and glued them into place to add more detail along with some sand. Bushes were glued into place using tiny bits of green foam, and by this point all of the castle pieces had finished printing. After a quick touch up and a quick layer of primer, I then began to paint everything. I also printed this Quidditch pitch, which I found the 3D model for online as well. I then added some holes to the castle pieces that would later be used to allow string lights to be run throughout. All the models were then airbrushed and hand painted to make sure that all of the primer was covered and all of the details were painted over.
And again, using the water and black paint, I was able to achieve that natural aged look to the castle. Once dry, I scraped off all of the paint covering the windows using an X-Acto knife, which allowed the light to shine through. I then worked on touching up the little details like Hagrid's hut, the flying car, adding pathways, and gluing down trees. Once I was satisfied with everything, I then made a form using some 2x4s and some silicone that would allow me to pour the epoxy lake. Now, when I mixed the epoxy up, I added some blue coloring, however, I must have added too much because the finished product was a lot darker compared to when I originally poured it, so just be aware if you're doing something like this yourself. The epoxy took about 4 days total to completely dry, and once it had hardened, I took the model out of the form. Once out, I cleaned up the edges and used some clear glue on the surface of the lake to add some ripples to the water. After putting it all together, this is what I ended up with.
If you guys enjoyed this project, give the video a like and subscribe if you want to see other videos like this in the future.